So as adults, there's a few things that we should know how to do, right? First, we should know how to file our taxes. Secondly, we should know how to at least cook good pasta. And then we should know how to change the tire in our car and maybe check the oil, right? Like those are pretty simple things. And if you are a person that likes to throw parties at all or entertain in any way, or if you are a person who will find yourself in that situation, you should know how to make a good drink. So today on The Educated Barfly, we are gonna be focusing on essential cocktails. These are the cocktails that everyone should know when they become an adult. Because when you have people over, there's nothing better than mixing them up a nice drink. And today we're gonna to teach you how to do it expertly. I'm Leandro Demon Riva, and no honey, it's Leandro's fault we're out of vodka. So today on Barfly, we're gonna be doing things a little bit differently. And I thought that we could go through a little bit of a tools overview before we did the video. Now, these are gonna be tools that you're gonna use in this video, but they also represent a pretty good starter bar kit. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna show you is a grand and a mini grand tin, but you have ones that are called a Boston shaker with a glass pint glass on one side. There's also cobbler shakers. So basically it's just uh, two different tins. You put it on a flat surface. You cock the small tin into the big tin at an angle hit it with the palm of your hand and then it should lock like that. Uh, when you want to unlock it, you just hit it in this little crease with the side of your hand and it unlocks the tin. This is gonna be coupled with a Hawthorne strainer. The Hawthorne strainer is outfitted with a coil on one side and a little metal tab on the other. It fits into the big or small tin, whichever one you want, and it keeps ice chips uh, or any type of herbs or fruit pieces out of your cocktail. This is called closing the gate. It tightens the coil on the inside traps things and it only releases the liquid. Sometimes though, it doesn't get everything out. And since I like a really clean presentation, I like to use a fine strainer. This is called double straining your cocktail. I highly recommend a fine strainer. Now, before you put anything inside a tin, you're actually gonna need one of these guys. This is called a jigger. There are many different styles of jigger. I like to use this one, which is called a graduated jigger. It has basic measurements on the inside going from half an ounce all the way up to two and a half ounces. So on the outside of the jigger, you have milliliters, tablespoons, and ounces, which is really convenient. I highly recommend getting a jigger because you wanna be accurate as possible with your cocktails so that you make very consistently good drinks. The next piece of equipment is called a mixing glass. Now, you don't have to have a fancy one like this, but if we can agree that bartending is equal parts show and function, then having a nice mixing glass is kind of a must. If you do not have one of these, you can use a pint glass of some kind. With that mixing glass, you are going to want a bar spoon. This is called a weighted spoon. And the reason why is because it has a weight on the top end of the spoon. When you're stirring, you don't want to use your wrist too much. You want to kind of have it all be in the fingers and making sure that the bowl of the spoon is on the outside of the glass, not making too much noise. For a beginner, I really highly recommend you get a weighted spoon. This is a pretty simple piece of equipment. I'm sure most of you guys have it. It is a peeler. I like to use a Y peeler just because it is a lot easier than a stick peeler to peel. These things are incredibly inexpensive and you will use it for a lot of things other than drink making. So I highly recommend one. The next thing we're gonna want to have is a muddler. It's a pretty self-explanatory piece of equipment. It is used to crush up herbs or fruit or anything that you want to uh, kind of lightly press in your cocktail to release flavor. It comes in various materials. You can get one made out of wood. You can get one made out of plastic or something that's like metal with a little plastic end or a metal end. You wanna keep these things nicely oiled so that they don't crack. There you have it, the muddler. So this is a fancy version of what you're gonna need, but you're gonna need a citrus press. That's what this is. You can have a hand citrus press or one of these guys. I really, this is my new favorite piece of equipment. If you opt for a hand citrus press, make sure that you get a large format one and not a small one. Obviously this one is pretty large format. I really like it a lot. So it has a spout on the side, so you can just like pour it straight into your jigger, which is really convenient. So you guys were probably wondering about these and these are a really nice piece of equipment I wanna talk about. First, we're gonna bring up all the rest of these guys and kind of situate them like this. These bottles are created by a company called Crew Supply Company, and they sponsored this video and gave us these bottles. So what makes this piece of equipment so great and why I love it so much and why I think it's such a game changer is that the bottle has a bottom that screws off. And so you, not only can you get in there to clean, but you can also easily batch things. You can easily put syrups in here. No more having to go in with a bottle brush and get the little corner here. 
Um, this is also made out of a glass that they call craft tech, the same type of glass that's used in a lot of bakeware and, um, and laboratory equipment. And so it's really shatter resistant, it's hard to break. These bottles come in three different styles. You have your 750 milliliter, uh, then you also have a chubby bottle. Now these are gonna be great for syrups or small infusions, things you're gonna do in a small quantity. And then they also have a 750 that has a milliliter measure on it, which is really, really helpful. And it's upside down. So you just go like that, and then you can see where you're filling up to. Uh, and you're done. So another thing that they make are these nice color-coded pour spouts. They have different colors that you put on your bottles and then you'll know which syrups are in which bottles, which is very, very helpful. So I love these bottles and you're gonna see them a lot more in the show. And I think that you really love them too. So if you wanna check them out for yourself, go into the video description, click the link, and now, Let's get into making the cocktails. So the first cocktail we're doing today is a Moscow Mule. This is just a very simple drink that you can put together. It's refreshing, it's crowd pleasing. Everybody loves it. As long as you have high quality ginger beer and some high quality vodka, you can knock them out. It's pretty limited, it's inexpensive to make. And that's all I gotta say about it. So first thing we're gonna do is cut up a lime. Three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. I'm just gonna put that straight into a glass. And two ounces of vodka. Then we're gonna open our ginger beer. I like to pour a little bit of the ginger beer into the glass to get the effervescence going. Add in our ice, top it up. Give it a little lime wheel. And there we have the Moscow Mule. So the next cocktail we're doing is a Negroni, which is also a very standard drink that everyone should know. This one is a little less of a crowd pleaser and a little bit more of a acquired taste if you haven't acquired the taste for Campari. But I will say this, the very first Negroni that I ever had I tasted it and I almost spit it out because I just didn't have the palate for Campari. But over the years of bartending, I really acquired that taste. And once you acquire the taste from Campari, there is nothing better. And now the Negroni is one of my favorite drinks. So this one is another very simple drink to do. It's just equal parts, sweet vermouth, Campari, and gin. So all we're gonna do is just one ounce of sweet vermouth, one ounce of Campari, and then one ounce of gin. Then we're just gonna take a big rock of ice, drop it into our glass and give it a nice stir. And you wanna just stir it until you start to see a little condensation appear on the outside of the glass. It'd be very hard to over stir something that has ice that just came out of the freezer. And last, we're just gonna add an orange peel and give it a nice twist. I like to rub the oils around the glass. So there it is, the Negroni. So the next one we're doing is a martini, another indispensable cocktail. This is something that everyone should know how to make. It's just three ingredients again. What I love about this cocktail is that they have infinite variations. No two martinis are alike. You can switch out your gin and you can switch out your dry vermouth to different brands. And because they have proprietary blends of herbs, spices, barks, and citrus elements, you can really play with the pairings and make wonderful, fantastic variations on this drink. So we have your chilled mixing glass. We're just gonna add a few dashes of orange bitters. I like to use a mix of Regan's and Fee's bitters, uh, but any orange bitters will do. And then we are using Lo-Fi Aperitif's dry vermouth today. We're gonna do one ounce of our Lo-Fi and two ounces of our gin. We're using Plymouth. She's gonna give it a nice earthy quality. And that's all there is to it. Then we're just gonna crack our first piece of ice. Ah, and give it a nice stir. So now I'm gonna go get my mixing glass out of the freezer, which I like to keep it in there till the very last minute to make sure that everything is properly chilled. And then we're just gonna pour our cocktail into our glass like so. There are a couple of different garnishes that you can do with your martini. I love to have my martinis with a slice of orange peel, but you can do orange peel and olives if you want to, or just plain olives. Olives actually does go very well with the orange bitters. So if you put orange bitters into your martini, uh, don't be afraid to put olives in it. So I like to give it like a nice zest of oil on top and get that fresh orange flavor. We're gonna put it right like so. So there you have the martini. So the old fashioned should definitely be in your repertoire because not only is it a classic cocktail and it is an iconic cocktail and it's easy to make, but it's also one of the most popular cocktails today. So what's nice is that it has a very clean template for experimentation. You just take out any one of the elements and plug something else in and you have a whole nother cocktail. All right, let's get into it. So first thing we're gonna do is just a few dashes of Angostura bitters one cube of sugar. I'm using Demerara sugar today because I'm using a little bit sweeter of a bourbon to satisfy my sweet tooth. So we're using Maker's Mark, which is a weeded bourbon. On top of our sugar, we're gonna just do just a little dash of soda to help the sugar dissolve. And then I'm gonna 
crush up my sugar cube here. So you want to crush up your sugar cube. You don't want to fully dissolve it because I like my old fashions to have this grainy quality to it. That is going to help it evolve over time because as your ice melts, your sugar will dissolve. And so the cocktail will go from a little bit more stiff to a little bit more sweet. And then we're going to add two ounces of bourbon. We have this nice rock of ice that we pre-cut. We're just gonna lower that into the glass. You wanna make sure if you're doing hand cut ice to always cut your ice for the glass so that you have that nice presentation. And then we're gonna give it some citrus zest. Now, uh, traditionally this cocktail calls for just an orange peel, but I like to do an orange and a lemon. So you're gonna take a nice peel, orange and lemon. We're gonna give it a nice twist on top, extract those oils. And then I'm not going to cut these or anything. I think I'm just going to stick them in, kind of rabbit ears them. If you want to put a little Luxardo cherry there, you can. You don't have to. It's a nice touch sometimes. There it is, the old fashioned. So the Paloma is a really refreshing tequila cocktail. If you love margaritas, you're really going to love this drink. And who doesn't love a margarita? Am I right? It's just great for your parties. Almost nobody turns their nose up at it. And made well, it is mwah, chef's kiss. All right, let's get into making the cocktail. So first thing we're gonna do is grab our tin and set it aside, because that's not the first thing we're gonna do. The real first thing that we're gonna do is juice a lime. Three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, half an ounce of simple syrup. Next, three quarters of an ounce of grapefruit juice, and then an ounce and a half of tequila. I really like doing fresh grapefruit palomas because they are just so refreshing. It's not the traditional way to make it, but it just gives it this nice juicy character. It's not overly sweet and it's just like fantastically balanced drink. So we're just gonna add some ice into our tin and then add our cocktail. Give it a nice heart shake. Add some ice to our glass. And before putting the cocktail in, I really like to actually add a little bit of the soda water inside ahead of the cocktail because the cocktail is gonna be denser. So if you put it in last, it's gonna layer on top. You wanna to make sure that it all mixes properly. So we're gonna give it a nice double strain. So for a garnish, I like to take a nice long swath of grapefruit peel. Give it a little spritz with the essential oils of the peel. And we're just gonna like wrap it around on the inside of the glass. And there you have the Paloma. So the last cocktail we're doing today is the Mojito, which is that very iconic Cuban cocktail. I decided to use a little Havana Club three year because why not make the Cuban cocktail with Cuban rum? But if you don't have Havana Club available to you, just use any white rum that you'd like. Also, just a little disclaimer, this is not a traditional mojito. This is my own favorite build. I do not put any uh, soda water into it. So the first thing we're gonna do is cut up half a lime into four wedges. Then we're gonna add a pinch of mint, and that could be six to eight leaves. We're gonna put our lime wedges into our tin as well, and what we're gonna try and do is situate the peel side down. Then we're gonna do one sugar cube plus half an ounce of simple syrup. That might seem like a lot of sugar to you, but really it's just about three quarters of an ounce of sugar total. The simple syrup will immediately balance the lime juice, whereas the cube of sugar will start to dissolve as the cocktail dilutes and it will get a little bit sweeter and a little bit sweeter over time, which is nice because you have some nice evolution in the glass. So then what we're gonna do is just lightly press the lime. And the reason why we situated the mint on the bottom and the lime on top is so that you can extract the juices from the lime, but lightly press the mint. You don't wanna press the mint too much. You're gonna get a very vegetal sort of bitterish kind of flavor. You also wanna make sure that you're very light on the peels because you don't wanna to extract too much bitterness from the lime peel as well. So just nice light presses. And you wanna make sure that to break up that sugar as much as possible. Then we're gonna add two ounces of white rum. Ooh, Spilled a little, so I gotta, gotta make up the difference. And then we're just gonna add a little, little tiny bit of pebble in there. And this is just to get the dilution going and get the chill going. You can shake until you don't hear any more ice in the tin. That's pretty much gone. And then what we're gonna do is just dump the contents into our glass and then fill the glass with pebble ice, like so. And then we're gonna take our mint sprigs, give them a nice little slappy poo. Little crushy pants, lightly crush the leaves though. Twist off the ends. And then we're just gonna add our little mint bouquet there. And then when you put the straw in, you wanna make sure to put it right in with the mint so that when you're sipping, 
you're getting that nice mint smell as you sip the cocktail. Now, I did not put soda water in this because soda water lengthens the flavors. The way that you think about it is that like, you know, if you drink rum or something and it's a very condensed flavor, when you add water, it sort of spreads that flavor profile out. And I just don't think this needs it. I think that the intense lime and sugar really makes this drink. And so I don't like to lengthen it out. So there you have it, a mojito. So there you have it guys, six essential cocktails to make your hosting experience that much better. And you can be adulting like me. Well, I adult most of the time anyway, but maybe, well, okay, okay maybe 60% of the time I'm adulting. If you are into the crew bottles that we featured on this episode, go to the description and click the link and you will find out all about them. Also, don't forget to check us out on theeducatedbarfly.com where we do articles, we do our virtual bottle program where you can purchase a bottle, we'll shout you out and you can help the show in that way. And uh, we also have some merch that you should check out as well. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe or as our good friend Graham Stephan says, smash the like button and I'll see you guys on another time.